Alright, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another edition of The Roaring Lion Lives On. Here are TEW 2020 Black Canvas Grappling Save, and we are finally here for the Yoshifusa Maeda Grand Prix. Yeah, we got it delayed a month, but you know what, I think it was worth it. And I think keeping it here is probably better going forward. Um... As I I, I want to have like I, like I've said a billion times, I want to keep my torn. I want to get like four tournaments going yearly, and I want to keep them pretty evenly spread out. So as of right now, Soul Survivor is scheduled for the July pay per view. But the m closer that that gets, the closer the more it's looking like I might push that one back. Probably right before our biggest show of the year, the um, the Lions Roar. Um, so yeah, but next month we will have um, Test of Champions will be our next pay per view. But we haven't even done the pay per view yet. So before we get into the recap, let's get to the news. And I do actually have a good bit of news. The first thing I want to talk about is I finally hired a third fucking referee, Janssen Nakata is who I've signed, he is 71, fucking got better already, he's a 71 overall referee, and he will be, yeah, our third ref, and I really fucking needed it for this tour show, um, if anything, so, I don't know where to, I just realized this has got the, kinda, don't look at that, maybe I'll remember to cover that up while I'm editing this, um, but, um, yes, yeah, so that's the first thing we have. I guess we're going to this page. This is the only spoiler-free page. Um, so, the next bit of news I want to announce is, um, before we get into the Grand Prix, there are, I did go through with it, I did hire four workers outside of Black Canvas Grappling to participate in the Grand Prix. Um, we have Monday Next, which is a pretty decent Australian worker. He was in Raw for the past couple of Cornellverse updates, um, but he got released from Raw, so he wasn't doing anything, and I'm like, this guy's pretty good. It says his style's inspired by the Japanese junior um, style, so I thought I'd bring him in for the tour, see how he does. He did pretty well for himself in terms of stats. Um, next up, I, 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 got, I went to Canada, and I hired Ant-Man from ACPW. He will be participating in the tour, in the tournament. Um, from SciShow would be one of their top guys, Fujio Narahashi from SciShow. And the final um, outside member of the Grand Prix will be Shimpei Hirose from Exodus 2010. He was a pain in the ass for me to book. I really wanted Commander Kawagishi or Orange Tezuguchi. Tezuchi, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but, um, so the thing about our owner goals are, I don't have many, it's don't fall in debt, and you can't hire anyone that has less than 45 in resilience or, um, toughness, and, like, the whole fucking Exodus roster had less than 45 in one of those categories, so, um, you know, upper mid card Shimpei Hirose was gonna have to do, and he was pretty decent, but he was loyal to Exodus 2010, and that means I had to constantly work around his schedule, and it was a pain in the ass, and that is why Storm Spillane could not be in the tournament, because I had to pick one, and I'm going to pick the guy I hired specifically for the fucking um, um, Grand Prix. What I mean by had to work around him was I had to constantly check and make sure he wasn't booked for an Exodus tour, on one of the tour dates and then move it around and it was at a point where I either gave I either would give everybody else no rest days and then a five rest day just so I could get both him and Storm Splane in the tournament or I could just call take the take the L and not have Storm Splane. so yeah um USPW opened a performance center and I can't imagine they're gonna produce any talent I just thought it was funny um, speaking of Exodus 2010, Shinbei Hirose, while he was nice and I do enjoy booking him, um, Exodus 2010 can absolutely go fuck themselves. In a matter of two fucking days, they upgraded their production value and their live event experience, and now I'm losing more money than I wanted to. I was, I've been making a steady, like, 60k every month, now I'm gonna make, like, 30k, because these motherfuckers had to upgrade their fucking, I, fuck Exodus 2010, all my homies hate them, I, like, oh my god. 
Um, speaking of Storm Spillane and the American Cobras, um, they are they're choosing us over Coastal Zone. So if we have a show booked and Coastal Zone has a show booked, they will pick us over Coastal Zone, but they won't pick Ole uh, yet, hopefully. Um, and speaking speaking of uh, the the owner goals of resiliency and toughness, I've been seeing a lot of comments. Um, as you guys, if you guys are long viewers of the channel, you know that I like to bulk record when I have free time because I don't have a lot of it sometimes. So. Um, the first episode of Black Canvas Grappling, Episode 0, has been posted as of this recording. So you guys are probably screaming at me in the comments already. But um, a good, a good, or no, somebody mentioned Yuta Isono in the comments. And somebody followed up with that. And I'm like, you know what? I, I, I think I replied even like, I do want to bring him in at some point. I just don't want him to get lost in the shuffle. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. This guy's really good. And he's a young lion, so he'll get even better. Um, uh, so yeah, I can go fuck myself. He only has 42 toughness. I couldn't hire him. <laughs> so, so much for you to Asono in this save. Maybe, maybe another day. Maybe another save. Um, Casey Valentine isn't getting rehired by USPW. And then I put in quotes, what the fuck? Please become active in Japan. He, I guess he was not active in Japan. Um, I really wanted him. Uh, Tornado Nagai is out politicking Roku Satomura. What a mistake I made by fucking hiring that. I hired him and Quick Kick Nakao. Both of them have 30s in pop across um, Japan. And only Quick and only Tornado Nagai has been a complete prick. So this guy's days are fucking numbered. I'm tired of booking him. Dude, he, he, complained, he complained about fucking losing to anyone that was shy of a major star. Dude, he complained about losing to Blastacoma. He complained about losing to fucking... Um, other stars that I can't remember off the top of my head. So, um, at one point in the Grand Prix, um, Tornado Nagai and Roku Satomura, uh, were both, were, were scheduled to face each other. So I'm like, I wonder, I wonder what's going to happen if I, if I put nobody to win and Tornado Nagai complained. So like he's, he's the bigger Hogan between those two. Um, in good news, now Zangoto can do 15 minute matches now if I slow build it. That's good shit. He can't do 20, and his match tonight is probably going to be a little stinky because of it. But, you know, we're improving. Um, USPW hired Texas Pete. They did this in the return to the SWF save I have going on, and I made this really funny picture, so look at that. Ah, uh, cool. Um, other good news, we, almost had z we had almost zero injuries during this whole Grand Prix. Zero. That's actually, that's really close. Really close. Not zero, zero, but really close. That's a huge good thing, and I had to turn injuries to fucking low to make that happen. But uh, the the exceptions were Dynamite Narhashi wrestled his first two Grand Prix matches because he was still suffering from I think broken ribs. Um, but th that only affected two his first two matches. Blasticoma broke his toe, but that only affected one of his matches. And Sajuro Sen bruised his eye socket on the very last playoff date, but he wasn't even in the Grand Prix. So I say we got off pretty fucking well so far. Of course, anything can happen on this show, but, you know. Um, literally, as I'm getting ready to record tonight, like I'm right before I start booking this show, I noticed on an Olay show that there was a team called the Roundhouse Puppy Kickers. And it's the t you'll never guess it. It's the team of North Star Jr. and Phoenix 4. Who the fuck... Dude, the Phoenixes are not fucking cooking right now. Um, and then in the very last bit of news I have, also on the very last in-game day before this show, um, Tommy Cornell's deal with 21CW has expired. And either at the very end of this episode, but I doubt it, or to start the next episode, we will find out where Tommy Cornell is going because, um, you know, 98% of the time he never re-signs with 21CW. So... There we go, that is the news report, and that took almost 10 minutes to do. So, we're gonna get straight into the tour dates. Alright, hey guys, Future64 here. Um, I'm having a lot of trouble with my editing software. I use a free program called Shotcut, and I say that because it's free, because I can't afford to pay for, like, Adobe Premiere or something that's actually good, and... I'm having a lot of fucking trouble just doing basic editing for this Grand Prix. All I'm trying to do is just put the standings on the screen, 
in real time with the with the tour rundown and it just keeps fucking crashing so fuck it you know what and the recap took like fucking 40 minutes anyway so um if you guys really really want that tour recap let me know in the comments and i'll cut i'll cut it out of this video and upload it as its own thing unlisted and i'll put a link in to the comments for you guys but it's really not worth it it's really fucking not worth it um so if you guys really want it i will just give you the raw unedited footage uploaded by itself um but yeah so the way this the way this tournament's gonna work is um i'm just gonna i'm on the screen right now uh will be I guess in a second, I should say. In a second will be the complete results of what happened, like who faced who and who went over. And um, so it's two blocks of 10 where the top four people in each block will advance and we will have an eight-man single elimination tournament. That will be the playoffs for the Maeda Grand Prix. In terms of tiebreakers, it will be the same as in... Um, uh, the Tag Mania Tour, where if Dynamite Narahashi and Animal Harker both happened to tie at the end of the tournament, and Animal Harker had defeated Dynamite Narahashi earlier in the tournament in the group stage, then Animal Harker will advance to the playoffs. And yeah, so if they both happen to tie, then we will have on night one of the playoffs on the quarterfinals, we will open the show with Animal Harker vs. Dynamite Narahashi, and then the winner will have to work double duty. And if that sounds unfair, it kind of is, but it's also like you should have won more matches to not get put into that situation. So um, yeah, so here is what happened. Here's all the here's all the results. These are the blocks. All right, pause it if you want to go through it, and then. Here are the standings. So yes, we did have a tie. However, Giant Brody did defeat Big Bruiser Finley on night five to win the tiebreaker, which means he will have a higher seed in the playoffs. And here are the playoffs. So yeah, there you go. Again, if you guys really want to see the show-by-show -show rundown, then let me know and I will I will un, I will give you the unedited raw footage uploaded unlisted with the link in the comments um, but for those of you that don't need that then here you go this was the much much condensed version that I'm sure you'd prefer playoffs day one we open the show with Suki defeating Monday next just because I thought that would be a great match, and it fucking was. It got a 66. And then Goto and Suki brawl afterwards. We then have Blast Ikoma. He defeats Giant Brody. Advances. Giant Brody, he had a really fucking good tournament, but it came up short when he faced on Blast Ikoma. And Giant Brody, he's about to go on another rampage. But Tanyu Toshusai, now that both men are out of the playoffs, Tanyu makes a beeline for him, prevents him from going on a rampage, and the two, they begin to brawl until they brawl to the back. And uh, next tournament match, we have Booner Kukentori defeating Washi Tanaka. Um... So, yeah, 79 for that match, by the way. Fucking incredible. I really didn't think it would do that well. Um, but Booner Kukatori is him, and we should all praise him like he's God. Um, Mabuchi Furusawa and Intensity defeat the team of Yoshi Nakataku, Tanya Tojusai, and Funakoshi. Showtime, he holds the belt up high while standing over Funakoshi just to, you know, get some more hype going into that main event. Shingen Miyazaki advances in the playoffs after defeating Big Bruiser Finley. This was a tough one, but I went with Shingen in the end. And in the main event, Razan Okamoto defeats Rokuma Matsushita, which means in the second round, Shingen Miyazaki will take on Razan Okamoto once again. In their first encounter, Shingen Miyazaki won. Or I guess in their first encounter at Heritage 2020, Razan Okamoto won. In their first rematch on day whatever it was, I think like two or three, Shingen Miyazaki beats Razan Okamoto, so now, on the second day of the playoffs, we will have the rubber match between Shingen and Razan Okamoto, and we will also have the, the match between Bunraku Kentori and Blast Ikoma. 
And to finish out our tour, we start, we open the show, the match goes 23-37, but Razan Okamoto, he comes out on top, and he advances to the finals, but he doesn't even get a he doesn't even get a minute to breathe because all of a sudden he's jumped by four men in black masks. They beat him down and they do the pilmanized thing with his leg. They put a chair over it and stomp on it. And um, yeah, we don't know who these guys are or why they took out Razan. But uh, this is not boding well for him going into this tournament, this uh, finals match. Uh, we also have Fujio Narahashi and Shinpei Arose team up. Tanya Tochusai defeats a young lion. The Wild Ones defeat some young lions. And the team of Fujio Narahashi and Shinpei, they enjoyed the team up. And they, you know, they faced some young lions, but they wanted a real challenge. And they only want to face people they respect. And that just so happens to be the Wild Ones, who after both of their matches, um, they, sh you know, um... Big Bruiser Finley shook Shinpei Hiroshi's hand, and Fujio and Animal Harker, they did like a brawl after the bell, knocked them both out, and when they both got up, they shook hands. So there's mutual respect there, and they're going to take each other on at the pay-per-view. Tornado Nakai and the Dependables defeat Quick Kick Nakai and the Spinebreakers. I had extra time on the card, so I just threw, you know, this together. I didn't even pick a winner. Dynamite Narahashi and Giant Brody defeat Monday next in Ant-Man. This is so Giant Brody can finally get his hands on Ant-Man once again, and he pinned him. So, uh, after the match, Tani Toshisai, he confronts Brody, and he challenges him for a standard time limit match at the pay-per-view. He's like, our encounter, our super-hyped encounter at day one got cut short at the pay-per-view. I don't want any more fucking excuses. I want you in the standard BCG 30-minute time limit. And Giant Brody agrees. Washi Tanaka teams up with Mirren Yoshisawa to defeat the next. And um, after the match, Washi Tanaka is jumped by Shingen Miyazaki. He's still furious that Washi Tanaka, he's that one half blemish on Shingen Miyazaki's tournament this year. And um, even though he would much rather beat Raz on Okamoto, beat him up, he's going to have to settle for Washi Tanaka who he has more than enough grudge against. So he jumps Washi Tanaka and he challenges him for the pay-per-view. And I think that's opening our card. Yeah, that's opening the pay-per-view. Is Shingen Miyazaki versus Washi Tanaka. And in our main event, to determine who's taking on Blasty, uh, to take on Razan Okamoto, Booner Kukintori defeats Blasty Koma. And that means Razan and Booner Kukintori have advanced to the finals. Here it is, the finals of the Maeda Grand Prix, and after the show, we have a press conference from Maeda himself, he's like, this is Razan's condition, his leg's kind of fucked up, um, but he's still gonna compete, so, there we go, that is the full show, I need to take a drink real quick. On the pay-per-view tonight, we have, opening the show, as I said, we have Shinga Miyazaki taking on Washi Tanaka. Uh, Miura and Yoshizawa taking on Raw Power. For the Challenger Series Championship, Nazengoto takes on Suki. Um, in a mutual respect match, Fujiro Narahashi of Saisho and Shinpei Hirose of Exodus 2010 will take on the Wild Ones. In a grudge match of all grudge matches, Tani Toshisai takes on Giant Brody. In the Maeda Grand Prix 2020 Finals, Razan Okamoto takes on Bunraku Kintori, and in the main event, the long-awaited rematch with a 60-minute time limit so that we will have a decisive winner, Mabuchi Furusawa will challenge once again for the World Championship against Funakoshi, and we open the show with Yoshifusa Maeda. He makes his first on-screen appearance of the save. We don't count the press conferences. Maeda, he makes his first on-screen appearance. He's like, um, we don't know who those mystery attackers are. We don't know who they're working for. The guys that took out Razan Okamoto's leg. But like I've said, Razan Okamoto, he's a very resilient guy. And while he's not at 100, he is more than capable of not only taking on Boon Kukantori, but taking him down. So, we are on high security tonight. 
we are any t- any anyone with a black mask, we're fucking kicking out. You know, he's like, we're not letting anyone we don't know into this building. So, yeah. And that's how we open the show, and the fans are like, hell yeah, yeah, we love that. Alright, hey, Future64 here again, and um, real quick, while it was very beneficial to cutting the um, runtime of this episode down from an hour and ten minutes to around 40 minutes, um, by cutting out the bulk majority of those of that tour recap, it, um, it, did, it did leave these undercard matches um, without like proper build-up for you guys, so... For the for the for the um, um, matches that need it, I will quickly interject and explain why this match is happening. So we're gonna open the show with Washi Tanaka versus Shingen Miyazaki, and the reason these two are fighting is for those of you that um, looked through the um, the tour results, you'll notice that Shingen Miyazaki was so close to having a perfect. Grand Prix, and the only blemish on his record was that he tied with Washi Tanaka, and that drove Shingen Miyazaki absolutely insane, and since he can't face Roku Satomura, beca- or sorry, not Roku, since he can't face Razan Okamoto, um, the man that beat him in the playoffs, he had to settle for Washi Tanaka, which is, that is the reason that he jumped um, Washi during the playoffs. So, yeah, let's get into that. And we open with Shingo Miyazaki and Washi Tanaka. Good wrestling, great wrestling, and good heat. Uh, you knew this match was going to be good, as Washi Tanaka is very good. But Shingo Miyazaki is just more over at this time, and I have him in higher programs. He is one half of my tag champs with fucking Showtime. So, Shingo Miyazaki defeats Washi Tanaka in 22 12 with an ankle lock. And, yeah, like I said, Shingen's just in a lot of higher programs, and another one's starting right now. It's Blasticoma and Rokuma Matsushita. They are not on the show, but they're not happy about it. They're going to put themselves on the show, and with Showtime completely busy in prepping for his main event match, M3's Blast Radius beat up Shingen Miyazaki, lay him for dead, and Blasticoma and Rokuman... Blasticoma picks up the tag belt, the two look at it, they nod at each other before throwing it down right back at him. The message is very clear. M3 want more gold. Alright, up next we have Raw Power versus the former tag champs Mura and Yoshizawa. And there isn't really much of a story to this one, it's just um, the next, their kind of strategy for, um, what's the word, trying to like... um. Their strategy for trying to for success, I guess, in BCG is to just jump higher profile people and bait them into a match, kind of, and then prove in that pay per view match that they are better. And that's all that really happened was that Raw Power uh, jumped Miri Noshizawa, and then Miri Noshizawa were ready because for the next one, and then they just kind of had some six mans and generic tags. There's really not much to this match. Following that, we have. Raw Power versus Miri Yoshizawa, and I fucking guess these guys are stars now. Shit, that's not what I was hoping for. Obviously, no, okay, that came out wrong. Obviously, I like that they're stars now, but I was not expecting that because I made this way less than 20 minutes. But, um, yeah, that's going to be a good rub for Raw Power, as in 1339, Inajiro pins Ichiro with the end of the world, and, um... Yeah, that, that caught me off guard. So, hell yeah. I love these two. Um, they're, like, my low-key favorite tag team in the whole Cornell vs. to book. So, yeah, having them go over Raw Power was a no-brainer. Inajiro with a 62. Magic gets a 56. Okay, so up next we have the rematch, or Naza and Goto's rematch for the Challenger Series Championship. And the story is pretty much, like, Goto's like, I deserve a rematch because you completely fucked me over and you and your stupid group injured me last time. And Suki's like, mmm, I don't think so. You gotta earn it. And then over the course of the tour, um, Naozen Goto does earn it and eventually gets granted the match. And then M3 tried to beat him down and injure him again. However, this time it did not work and he stood tall, unharmed, um, 100% going into his Challenger Series rematch. 
Following that, we have the Nazan Goto versus Suki match. Match only gets a 66 because, like I said, Goto, he can't go 20 minutes yet, even though Suki's a star, so the match is going to get kind of, you know, dragged down. But Suki's still able to carry him to a 66, and I almost forgot. There we go. I got to keep the ratings tracker. Suki got a 74. So... Yeah, he has retained his BCG Challenger Series Championship, makes it defense number four in a 66-rated match. But after the match, Shingen Miyazaki is not a guy to just take shit, because while Suki is celebrating, Shingen comes fucking running down, hits him with a clean big boot right across the face, and he's fucking stomping him and stomping him, and he's like, get a fucking save your boy. He's begging Blast and Rokumon to come save him. And eventually they do, and that's when Shingen makes his essay escape. So, um, M3 have really used the numbers game to just try and get what they want. But Shingen Miyazaki ain't having any of that shit, as he gives them a taste of their own fucking medicine as one man without the help of two others. 72 for that match. Alright, next is the Wild Ones versus the Outsiders, Fujio Narahashi and Shinpei Rose. And this one I kind of explained, but not really. So, um, in the tournament, Finley faced Shimpei and Fujio faced Animal Harker. And after their matches, regardless of what the result was, I believe... I know, I know Harker and Fujio tied, and Shimpei and Finley... Finley went over Shimpei. Uh, the results weren't important, but what was important was that after each match... Um, the outsiders respected, they truly respected the competitors that Harker and Finley were, and they shook their hands, so when they teamed up, and they're like, hey, we like teaming up, uh, but we want a real challenge, they only wanted to face two guys that they respected, and that's why I've been calling it the mutual respect match. Next up, we have the mutual respect tag team match, and about that, a great wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd, it gets a 65 the Wild Ones go over the outsiders of Fujio Narahashi and Shimpei Hirose. Obviously, I would have loved to book these guys better in the tournament especially. I tried to give them a couple wins so they didn't look like complete fucking jobbers. But the thing about the Cornellverse is that the only guys that are over in Japan like as a whole are working for the top companies. So I could have hired... The whole point of this was to, to try to... um hire outside talent that wouldn't interfere with me fucking around with the schedule, and that backfired on me anyway, as Shinpei Hirose picked Exodus over us, so, um, I was just lucky that Exodus tour was just ending as ours was starting, so, um, yeah, they're just not very over in our region, is what I'm getting at, so that's why they didn't have too high a points, that's why the Wild Ones are going over tonight, but they're really fucking good, so I wanted to give them a pay-per-view match to showcase what they're good at. And this is just the pop barrier not coming across as they only get 50s. But even with like, what is it, 16 pop they have in our region, they still tie Animal Harker, who's also not bad himself. But Finley gets a 73. That's got to be his best performance of the save so far. After the match, the Wild Ones, they get back on track. They're like, for the past couple pay-per-views, we're like, we've been trying to get a get our get another shot at the tag titles and um i think this has proven that we're finally worthy but they are then interrupted by first miura and yoshizawa who are like no 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 you are not getting a tag title shot before us and then they are interrupted by team taku who have um you know they're like you know we're tired of being over we're tired of being overlooked we can bring almost anything to the table we can bring more to the table than the two of you combined so if anyone's going to get a tag title shot it's going to be us so this is just kind of setting up a match for the future where the winner will probably get a tag title shot this next one doesn't need much explanation because most of it happened before the grand prix but as you know at the end of time battle it was announced that on night one the main event would be Giant Brody versus Tanya Toshu Sai, and in that match, the two had tied. Because the time limits were shorter, it was 20 minutes instead of 30 minutes, and once Giant Brody was eliminated from the playoffs, that is when Tanya Toshu Sai 
said, fuck it, let's get our match, and I that that part is in the video. So, yeah, that's really all the buildup that you missed. Up next, we have the Tanya Toshusai versus Giant Brody blow-off match, and the match goes 22 minutes and 34 seconds, just past that 20-minute time limit that they were given during the Grand Prix, and Tanya Toshusai is able to pick up the victory over Giant Brody. Tanya gets a 63, the match gets a 68. And after the match, it's time for the Ma Maeda Grand Prix. Boon Rikukatori makes his entrance, and Razan Okamoto, he makes his entrance, but you can see a slight limp in his leg as he's walking. And the second he gets into the ring, and they do the introductions, the second that bell rings, Boon Rikukatori makes a beeline, low drop kick right to that leg, and that's just the story of this match, is that any time Razan Okamoto tried to overcome, he would hit his comeback, Boon Rikukatori would be able to cut it off with that leg, he'd go for his finisher, his leg would give out on him, the story was just those four masked men that we don't know that attacked Razan Okamoto really did a number on that knee, and in the end, despite Razan's valiant efforts, Boon Rakukentori is able to defeat Razan Okamoto in 2507 with his spinning forearm smash. Boon Rakukentori has won the 2020 Yoshifusa Maeda Grand Prix. The match gets an 80 fucking one. Let's go. Tori with an 85 and Razan with an 81. Good shit from both men. I'm sure the second I ran that angle, you knew that Razan was losing. But you know what? Maybe I wanted a good hero story. Maybe I wanted a good comeback story. But um, here's the issue with that is um, I needed to run that angle because uh, how do I put this? We have another stable in BCG. And the reason that Maeda was not able to catch who those four men were was because... The only people that were let in BCG were people that Maeda knew. And Maeda knew all four men that took out Razan Okamoto. And it is revealed tonight, after the match, Razan Okamoto, he gets to his feet, he offers his hand to Boon Rikuken Tori. Tori shakes it, but he doesn't let go. And with Razan's back turned to the entrance ramp, all four of those masked men, they're back. They rush the ring and they lay out Razan Okamoto before standing with Boon Kintori and unmasking themselves to reveal that it was Dynamite Narahashi, Inijero Yoshizawa, Noritoshi Mura, and Giant Brody who were working for Boon Kintori to help him win the Maeda Grand Prix. And when Tori said... He'll do anything to win this Grand Prix. He fucking meant it. There is no bar this man will sink below to get what he wants. And that is with this new stable. They don't reveal their name just yet. I'll have it ready for you in the next video. But yeah, we have our third stable made for this save. Led by Boon Raku Kintori. And in our main event... 60 minute time limit, Mabuchi Furusawa versus Funakoshi 2. Funakoshi has kind of been disappointing, but would I just give myself the world title? Who knows? These men, they give it their fucking all. They go forever. They go damn near the 60 minutes. In fact, they get a little too close to the 60 minutes because in the main event, after 60 minutes, neither man can get the victory as Mabuchi Furusawa and Funakoshi draw once again when the time limit expires. The thing about BCG and the way our BCG operates is that these time limits can only be extended so far. And they have reached the furthest time limit that Maeda will allow. He's told Furusawa. Furusawa didn't want a time limit. He was like, I'm not fucking going to give up. And I know Funakoshi's not going to give up. I don't want a time limit. But Maeda said, I won't let you. I save no time limit matches for when we absolutely need a victor. And that only happens in tournaments. And Mabuchi Furusawa, he settled for a 60 minute time limit. But Funakoshi, he wasn't going to settle. He wasn't going to give up his championship. And in the end, Funakoshi retains the belt after 60 minutes. He only gets a 62, 
which means that he will not be getting a post-show speech tonight. He actually did um, he did the fifth best on the show. He did, or the sixth best, including Furusawa. He uh, did worse than Finley. That's because Finley's really good. That wasn't a dig at Funakoshi. That was just because Finley's really good. And after the match, Furusawa, he looks at Funakoshi. He's like, you fucking bitch. I don't care how. I don't care if it's for the title or not. One of these days, we're going to have our singles rematch, and I'm going to get my fucking victory. And Funakoshi says, over my dead fucking body. It will be for the title, and I'll fucking beat you. I don't care how long you train. I don't care how hard you work. I will train longer. I will train harder, because I'm fucking better than you and all you fucking scum that came from GCG. Showtime can kiss my ass because I'm the fucking man. And Furusawa says, you're just mad at Showtime because you'll never be Showtime. They just go off on each other. 70 rated angle, promo battle to close the show. Those men fucking hate each other. And the show gets a 78. Booner, Kook, and Tori and Rasan Okamoto are the fucking legends of this business. I love them both. Boon, Rakuk, and Tori did the best. Razan with a close second and Suki finishing with third. Obviously, I would have finished second, but because I can't give myself a speech, uh, Razan finishes second. I think this is the exact same. <laughs> this is the exact same as Time Battle, but you know what? That means we know who our top guys are. Oh my god. I'm out of breath again. I guess we'll just see if, um, Tommy Cornell signs or not. I doubt it. The show was awesome. Of course it is. It always is. Um, yeah, no, we do not know yet. We do not know yet. Oh, how much money did that make us? Oh, that made us so much fucking money. Dude, that made us so much fucking money. My voice is cracking because it hurts. I, I like, I thought I had allergies. I think I'm just sick. I know a lot, I know that show is probably really predictable, but you know what? I, I don't really care, you know? Sometimes you need the good predictable stuff for, um, as building blocks before your big stuff. So, um, yeah, like I said, up next we'll still, of course, I'm not gonna change Test of Champions, there's no need for me to change Test of Champions, but I am thinking about switching soul survivor to this september 2nd show right before the lions war so that way i can have the soul survivor whoever wins the soul survivor can go straight on to face for the championship at the lions roar um so yeah and then i think i could do a tournament in november or maybe december i don't know i didn't really ugh. Yeah, I don't know yet. I don't know. And I said I was going to make the Soul Survivor a single elimination, but I, I actually thought of a better plan, I think. But it's not set in stone. So I'm talking I'm talking multiple episodes in the future because Soul Survivor is almost certainly not going to happen when it's scheduled to. I just don't know exactly how far I want to push it back. If I want to push it back all the way to September or if I want to push it back to just August. So, but regardless... Up next, we have the Test of Champions, and I forgot, that means it's official, by the way, because Mr. Boon Rakukantori, you know, that, that, that scumbag he is, used those underhanded tactics to win his third um, Maeda Grand Prix, that means that he will face <laughs> the only two, I didn't even realize, the only two we've had are those two, that's fucking awesome, um, that means Mr. Boon Rakukantori will get his world title match in the main event of Test of Champions. Right there. Boom. All right, and that's going to do it for this show. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you're all excited for the Test of Champions tour.